Hello, great people. Happy Friday to you guys. Wonderful Friday to everyone. Today we have some exciting news to discuss. We're going to be discussing the, you know, what is the latest update on the 11 million undocumented immigrants. Um, the, the House of Representatives are currently waiting to vote on the BBB, that's the Build Better Act. That's the act that contains the latest immigration provisions for the undocumented people, you know, trying to make sure that they, they get some sort of documentation here in the US. So the voting is going to happen very soon. But before it does, I still want us to discuss, um, you know, the interesting parts of the immigration provisions that covers the undocumented immigrants and what the plan is for them. Guys, you are very welcome to this video. Please don't forget to, of course, like um, the page, follow, subscribe, and also drop me your comments. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, yeah, we're giving all the legal scoop today. So yeah, we're not spilling the tea we're giving. So I have my ice cream ready, guys. Oh, it's even melting. Oh my gosh. Can you guys see my scoop? Yes, giving you the legal scoop on what's going on. Okay, so let's get started. Um... I have a lot to talk about today, so I hope we can make it through. So the first thing is that, um, you know, there have, there have already been plans to try to legalize the 11 million undocumented immigrants. The first plan was, you know, um, making it part of a budget reconciliation. Senate parliamentarian said no. Second part was updating their registry. Senate parliamentarian said no. I've done videos on all these. If you want more information, you can watch my videos on YouTube, Facebook. Now, this third plan is actually to give parole, something known as parole. I've also done an extensive video discussing what parole means, just to give people the, the uh, you know, a parole document to be able to work and travel here in the U.S., even though they are undocumented or don't have papers or don't have authority to be on United States soil. The parole will give them, you know, permission to be here for a while. So this is the third plan. That is the latest plan. And there's a lot of tension mounting up currently in Congress. So the House of Representatives um, are going to be voting very shortly. By this afternoon, we'll know what's going on and what's up. I'm just so excited. So let's talk about that. So the first thing is that to be voted upon, the bill would need 60 votes, OK? um normally in senate so the thing is that with um house of Rep the house of representatives so remember congress is divided into two we have the house of representatives and we have the senate two chambers the house of representatives um the democrats who are proposing you know who want undocumented immigrants to get documents they are in the majority so we have 221 democrats against 213 republicans so with the house of representatives we don't have an issue there the bill is going to be voted upon, you know, because we have majority, okay? The Democrat, well, I, when I say we, I'm just rooting for immigrants. So if it was Republicans who were rooting for immigrants, I'll be on their side. But in this instance, the, the Democrats are 221 more um, than the Republicans are 213. So the House of Representatives, we don't have a problem there. They're going to pass the bill. The issue comes with Senate, where there's a 50, so it's a 100 member Senate and it's, it's split. 50-50, and then Kamala Harris brings a tie. So, um, on the side of Democrats. So the problem is that with the House of, with the Senate, um, instead of trying to get the sixty votes to pass a bill, they want to overcome something known as the filibuster. And so, they want to include this into the budget reconciliation. And the Build Back Better is a bill. You know, it's it, it's a bill. It's a social spending bill that is supposed to advance social policies in the U.S. So it's focusing on things like the health sector, child care sector. Um, um, I put down a few things I wanted to talk about. So, for example, it's going to be giving, um, you know, Americans 12 weeks of paid family leave if somebody gives birth, then three days of bereavement if there's a death in your family, and then there'll be tax cuts for, you know, people with children and all of that. So this bill is going to, is covering all those things like health sector, you know, um, the climate and all these things, right? And they have intentionally included immigration provisions into the Build Back Better Act. Okay, so they want to pass all these things at the same time. So we're sort of sneaking 
to make sure that this is passed. And of course, it has um, budgetary implications. And the size of the bill, this is going to cost U.S. government $3.5 trillion. That means $3.5 billion every um, year or so when they do the calculations. So it's a very expensive bill, meaning that if they want to implement all these things, U.S. has to spend money. And this is how much it will spend. It will it will cost the United States to actually make sure that money. Okay, so that's the size or well, the cost of this bill. The next thing is that, um, so again, because it's going to be part of a budget reconciliation, um, we simply just need a, a simple majority. Okay, so we need 51 out of the 100 instead of the, this well, instead of the 60 that we need in Senate, okay? And the thing is that there are a few of the Democrats, two of them who are not in favor of this Build Back um, Better Act because they think it's too expensive. So the problem is that if we have 48 against 50, because the Republicans are very unified in their opposition, okay? They are very, very unified. So it's important that the Democrats, everybody comes on board and then they can, you know, make sure that they are able to pass this Build Better Act, Build Back Better Act. Because if they pass it, that means that the undocumented, 11 million undocumented immigrants are now going to get status, immigration status here in the U.S. So we're going to be talking some more about the provisions of this Build Back, because I have the text of um, um, the Rules Committee that was discussed in, in Congress. So we'll, we'll pull that up and then I've just highlighted a few portions and we'll go through that. Okay, so yes, we've talked about that. Um, yes, we've talked about the cost of the bill as well. Yes, yeah, so it's focusing on education, health, housing, climate, and all of that. Okay, so now let's pull the text um, up and then let's talk about it. Okay, I think this is, yes, yeah, so this is the Build Back Better Act, um, the Rules Committee print, so it's section by section. We're just going to jump straight into the immigration portion because that's our focus. And even with the immigration portion, I think it's page 63, we're not going to be talking about the employment immigration, we just want to talk about the, um, you know, family immigration. Mm, I highlighted it, I hope this, this is it, 63. That's a golden section. Yes, right there. So very excited about this. I I just can't wait to see what, what's going to happen. But here it is. Guys, drop your comments. I'll be reading them soon. So this is the immigration provisions that is inside the Build Back Better Act. So the first part of the act is that it's going to grant protection and work permits to the undocumented immigrants. So the first thing is that it provides an opportunity for certain individuals. These certain in individuals have been described in section 6001B and let's go to section 6001B. Uh oh, I have to go down, but essentially it gives a time, well, it categorizes that the people this covers is the time frame. You know, people who have been in the US from a certain point in time, they will be covered. They will receive, they can request, number one, you have to request and then you will receive a grant of parole under the Immigration and Nationality Act. So if you are undocumented, you have to file a request and then you receive the parole. So the first thing is that they will file an application for parole and then they'll pay a fee to cover the processing cost. And then number three, you have to complete background checks and security checks to the satisfaction of, of course, um, DH, uh, DHS. And then if your parole is approved, um by the secretary of homeland security it's for five years as we discussed yesterday um and then you can file an extension of an additional five years so 10 years in all that's why it said it will not be granted beyond september 2031 because we're in 2021 so a 10 year parole um five years given at a time and then an extension of five years okay so this is what the plan is going to be for the undocumented immigrants they are going to be um getting this this work permit as well as a travel document that will allow them to work and then you know visit visit their loved ones abroad so now so this is the section 6001a2 directs the secretary of homeland security to grant employment hooray i'm so so happy about this and travel authorization to individuals granted parole under this section 
and to deed to deem them eligible for real ID compliance, driver's licenses, or state ID cards. So remember that some undocumented immigrants don't have IDs, and the real ID is like the latest form of ID. I think Virginia introduced it about a couple of years ago. Um, because I remember when I went for mine, it's you know a security enhanced form of identification, and you need to provide certain identifiable do identifying documents and then they'll grant you the real ID. The real ID, you can use it to drive, and you can also use it to travel within the United States. If you're traveling outside with the real ID, you need a passport, but essentially, you need to prove things like your age, your name, your identity, your social security, your address. And so it will allow undocumented immigrants to be able to get the real ID, to be able to move freely around and do things that they haven't been otherwise able to do, okay? so. Who are the people, who are the undocumented people who will benefit from this? Um, so it's going to allow individuals to request parole under this section if they enter the United States before January 1st, 2011. Okay. And you have continuously resided in the U.S. Um, since such entry. And you are not inadmissible under some paragraphs of the um, Immigration Nationality Act. So under paragraph two of the INA, Section 212, paragraph 2, it talks about if you have been convicted of certain crimes. So if you've been convicted of certain crimes, like um, we won't go into the crimes, but if you've been convicted of certain crimes or like prostitution, you know, moral turpitude crimes, you will not qualify for this. There are lots of other crimes. And then under section three, it talks about terrorism. If you are engaged in terrorism, of course, nobody's going to be granting you a parole document to live and work in the US. Okay. So those are just examples to give you um, an idea of the types of crimes that will make you inadmissible for this parole document if you are an undocumented immigrant. And the next thing is that um, it will require the um, Secretary of SHS to extend parole until September 2031. Remember, we spoke about this yesterday, 10 years, so five years and then another five years. So um, if the individual continues to qualify for parole based on the policies and, and implementing guidance that were in effect when the individual was initially granted parole. So here it just means that if you're granted parole, um, you know, and then after being granted parole, you go and engage in terrorism. Now you are no longer in a, you are no longer admissible. You are inadmissible because of your crime. So you cannot extend it. So you need to continue to qualify for the parole even after the first grant. You need to be of your very best behavior, you know, making sure that you are a good member of the society. Okay. So let me move on to the places where I've highlighted the pertinent portions that. I know um, affects many of us and is of primary interest. So guys, this is the, the text. You know, I'm giving you the legal scoop, the scoop from the real deal. So under section 6002F, it prohibits, yes, 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 this is fantastic because look, it prohibits the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security from disclosing information that you provide to ICE, okay, ICE is, um, of course, or CBP, um, for purposes of immigration enforcement. So the point is that sometimes undocumented, undocumented people don't want to get involved in these things because if you're like, hey, what if I'm, I'm going to get arrested? Immediately I oust myself, you guys are going to come for me and detain me. But no, um, the statute is going to prohibit the use of the information that you provide for the purposes of being granted a parole document to be used against you. It cannot be used against you for purposes of enforcement, immigration enforcement. The fact that you're out of status will not be counted against you, you know, if you go forward and then provide your information for the benefit of um, this pro this pro this program. Okay. And then it requires the Secretary of Homeland Security to issue interim rules implementing the section all later than 90 days after the date of its enactment and begin accepting and adjudicating an application for parole um not later than 90 days. Okay. So once the rules are established uh, within 90 days, they need to issue interim rules and then begin to accept and adjudicate applications. Oh my goodness. So it's going to be very fast. Guys, get well, hopefully get ready. I hope um, the Republicans are not going to put up a fierce fight because look, we, I mean, we have succumbed a lot. We, we, we came from, you know, 
a process that was that was that had a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants and now this has been whittled down all the way to just not even a green card just a mere work permit and a mere travel permit so i hope they're not going to fight this because it's the barest minimum that they are giving to these immigrants who are truly deserving so i mean i understand that some may have broken the rules and all of that but we're not going to be focusing on that um, I don't know if we should talk about this. Well, maybe we should just briefly um, go through this. So this section 6003 will create a new section 25, uh, 245N under the Immigration and Nationality Act. So this will ins be inserted under 245 um, of the INA. This new section, what's going to be um, what is going to be stipulating is that it will allow an individual who's eligible for adjustment of status. So it, for instance, you are here in the U.S. and you are eligible for adjustment of status, meaning that um, a, an underlying petition has been filed for you and you need to adjust your status. Sometimes if you are in the preference immigrant category, you need to actually wait until a visa is available you know, through the visa bulletin, be, depending on your priority date, to now be able to adjust your status. So, is, so if you are here in the U.S. and you are eligible for adjustment of status, but you are now waiting for your priority date to become current, then you will be made to pay 1500 and then you can submit the application for adjustment of status. This is fantastic, again, because it, it, some, some, some of the... Um, some people have to wait for many years just for their priority dates to become current. So this is trying to cut down on the wait times of all of that. Let's see. Um, yeah, let, let me just uh, go down. Let's talk about some other portion of... Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, let's, let's talk about this also. Um, so it says that sections, so there's going to be, they're going to appropriate $2.8 billion to US, USCIS um, in the year 2022, fiscal year 2022. And this will be for the purpose, of course, this is the money they're going to allocate for, um, for this process. And it will have the purpose of increasing the capacity of USCIS to efficiently adjudicate applications described here and to reduce case processing backlog so the point is that the 11 million undocumented immigrants if this is going to be passed into a law uscis needs more money more money to hire more money to train more money to equip um the the uscis is the department that you know adjudicate or reviews your application so there's going to be a lot more work for them so they need a lot of money to pay all these people they're going to be hiring to adjudicate these applications so so this these are the um considerations i think let me see if okay okay perfect so yeah guys um i hope you guys have enjoyed this video we just spoke about this build better build back better act which has included some portions of immigration into the provisions and the house of representatives are going to be voting upon it this afternoon i'm just waiting to see what that outcome will be and then of course almighty senate will also take it up guys remember that congress is responsible for passing laws in the u.s and congress is made up of the house and senate so both chambers have to vote and once they both voted and um you know we have good news then the bill will be passed into law and then the president has to sign it and then it's you know just jubilations from then on so please um keep your prayers up and let's hope for the best because i mean we've sacrifice a lot we we as, as 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 i keep saying we're thinking about citizenship for undocumented immigrants that was just way too big of a dream now we're down all the way to a parole which is fine you know work permit and travel documents which is essentially what many people just want they don't necessarily want to become u.s citizens you know so that's what is happening let me read a few comments guys hmm, i'm still cold <laughs> 
you guys didn't drop the fire emojis drop them drop them let's warm up here hot rep says hi hello hot rep hot rep says my favorite lawyer oh thank you so much hot rep. that's a pleasure to hear i'm really humbled hot rep said it must favor me in jesus name amen i'm praying along with you hot rep says from chicago okay you're watching from chicago good 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 and he says i got my tea scoop good <laughs> god will touch those two yes we're praying that they will hot up says what if we don't have um ssn don't worry all the details of what we need to do what needs to be done will be communicated to us once it's passed into um law the exact recommendations will be will come out so we'll know angela budget says hi Ikia. hello angela so glad you're here today hot up says will they still grant the id yes that's what the the bill is saying so hopefully yes um does it apply to those who came in 2017 i think i gave the um timeline it said um january if you came before january 2011 i i could go back on that but yes i think january 2011 so 2017 huh that's the that's the thing i mean there's always a cutoff point and unfortunately some people are not going to benefit so let's wait and see what they what they say but i think the text said let me let me just pull that up i think it was january um 2011 you should have been here before january 26001b yes before january 1st 2011 okay so initially these people said you know when we started the u.s citizenship act um the pathway to citizenship is said january 1st 2021 but now they've gone all the way back we just keep compromising and compromising but yeah we'll just wait and see what happens mr francis gabin is giving the prayer emoji thank you so much yes we are praying so hard as i was just giving us the fire emoji to 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 um, warm up this place. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, I feel the heat. And Ocheng Wasike Kevin says praying. Yes, I'm also really praying. I mean, something has to come out of this. Okay, guys. Oh, I should have taken off. Um, yeah, I should have taken off that screen. So, guys, that is what is going on. Mr. Francis Gabin says, I see. Nanapia, are you now joining? Yeah, little lace. He says, I'm all ears. Oh my gosh, we just well almost ended. We've done 21 minutes. So um don't you can always replay this video. Uh hopefully you can benefit from it. And Frederick says, Oh, I'm little. Yes, you are, because I'm hopping off very shortly. Um, we have a lot of you know some crazy things we are working on so i have to rush off so guys that that was an update for um the 11 million undocumented immigrants please just go back and replay if you missed it and um i'll see you guys hopefully next week and i said oh yeah i just joined yes 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 okay so guys um i'll see you guys hopefully next week i'm wishing you all a wonderful rest of the weekend please take care be safe and bye-bye